Hi, and welcome to Oxygen 4's Hardware Showcase. I'm Master Goffron, and I'm going to be demonstrating the submissions this year that are targeted at the Superchip platform. This year, we're going to be using a different calculator from last time. We're going to be using an HP 48GX series calculator. In this case, we have 128K of RAM available to us. And in addition to that, uh, well, no, um, we have 128k of RAM available to us, but all that really means for us is that we're able to store more ROMs on the calculator. Uh, it has the same memory clock speed as the previous calculator we used, the 48S, but it does have a faster CPU running at twice the speed, that's 4 MHz. But I should emphasize that most commands use multiple cycles to perform, especially uh, if they use more nibbles. Uh, the registers in the HP 48, they have a Saturn microprocessor in them, and what's interesting about them is they have four registers, but each one of those registers is 64 bits. And they have a, a an interesting programming language uh, is used for them, where the command you use determines how many nibbles, which is sets of four, of those registers are used in the operation. So certain operations uh, use many, many more cycles, depending on if they have to act on a lot of nibbles. And certain operations in the emulator that we use, Superchip, do use more. And as a result, even though the memory clock is the same, having a faster CPU does increase the speed of chip 8 games running in the super chip emulator quite a lot. Almost a, to a factor of maybe 2 in some cases. Uh, so it is a, a significant boost in speed and it's, uh, it's definitely apparent that people have immediately made use of that additional speed. Uh, we know that the GX series calculator is a little bit less contemporary with Superchip than uh, the S series was. And we, we know this because in the move to the G series calculators, uh, some of the hardware pointers were changed. And in Superchip binary, all those hardware pointers are, are written in as uh, the S series calculator. In fact, the, the G chip, the, the G series Superchip emulator you can get from the HP Calc website, uh, only actually updates the display hardware pointer. It doesn't update a pointer to the user flags. And as a result, uh, all the user flags wouldn't actually have worked on the G-series calculators. Then again, nobody actually uses them, so not so big a deal. Uh, but uh, it's the sort of thing where people probably would have fixed it themselves. A lot of uh, HP programs ceased to to work anymore in the, the move to the G series, so people became adept at finding and fixing those pointers in their binaries. As you can see here, we're looking at the Octajam 4 logo. Uh, it doesn't run as nicely as it does in Octo. Uh, being it's a low res uh, program, it's using the standard 64 by 32 resolution. Uh, that That seems to not be it doesn't seem to run particularly well in uh, in the Superchip program, mainly because it has to double all of the pixels. It can't just read from one part of memory to another part of memory, which is what it would like to do, because the display buffer is that full 128 by 64, so every time it, it reads it has to basically expand all of the data for, that you're writing, so it, uh, it struggles a little bit whenever you do anything a bit too fancy with low res. The first game that I'll show you is the game that me and Takiso worked on. Uh, that, that game is Height. Uh, it was it was called Hate, and it looks like Hate, but it's actually H8, and the 8 has an umlaut. And if you were to write out H8... Let's just do that. You get the word Height! Isn't it clever? And we figured that maybe an 8 with an umlaut would. Uh, if you're familiar with German at all, you can put an umlaut above certain letters and it changes the sound in a particular way. And we figured that maybe an 8 with an umlaut might sound a little bit like eight rather than eight. That's a little fun pun. But uh, height. Now when we when we made this game we decided that we weren't going to target G-chip which is Superchip 1.1, we were going to target my compatibility version that's much more similar to Octo in the way it operates. It doesn't have strange collision results. It doesn't have um, the eye pointer not moving forwards, and it doesn't have uh, bit like uh, bit shifts. Um, 
it uses the register that you specify. So it, it works much more like the VIP, it m work, works much more like Octo does normally. So this is a quirkless thing. So it wouldn't really have worked, but I think we could have made it work. The main thing with Jump Zero, uh, Takiso didn't want to uh, bear with the rather inconvenient behavior of Jump Zero, where it uses a different register depending on where it mem in memory it's going. But uh, our, our goal really was to sort of make a... This was originally an idea I came up with last year for a, a VIP game, but I, I it was not fully fledged, didn't really go anywhere. And I just adore so much about this game. I love the bizarre arms. Honestly, the bizarre arms is almost the only part of the game I had much impact on. I, uh, I think I did the last unrolling of the rendering loop for them to try and make sure the, uh, the, the, the long elongated arms uh, are multiple draw, sprite draws. And it's okay on the arms to some extent because when you get to the bottom of the screen, we've discovered that it doesn't wrap sprites, so we can just draw eight rows and it's fine, it just goes off the bottom of the screen and we don't worry about it. But with the, the legs, obviously that is a factor because you have to make sure you draw however many uh, pixels is the right number of pixels to have at some point. So if it's if it's two pixels away from the top, you have to only draw two pixels. So the, the drawing loops aren't, aren't as trivial as we might like. Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Uh, mainly because um, when we were demonstrating them in Octo just to see what they were like, we were worried about Sprite Flicker, uh, which is uh, very apparent in Octo. And it's a little bit apparent on the, the VIP, but it's much, it's actually kind of hidden on Superchip because of the pixel display rate. You can write to the buffer quite a lot faster than the pixels really are able to change because it's uh, an LCD display. And there's quite a lot of ghosting. Uh, and it works quite well for what we were doing here because we were able to test what we were doing as we as we developed the game. Um, and because they're quite thick, there's a four pixels wide, when they, they judder around a little bit, it seems the ghosting kind of helps the effect uh, because they it kind of blurs it, I suppose is the best way to describe it. And we were quite happy because we, we were mostly worried about there being an effective, obvious pulsing effect running down the leg. We we really wanted to try and get it as fast as possible. So we, we did a loop unroll on it where it, it, it jumps with a jump zero, I might. This is why we were worried about uh, um, using the correct period, correct binary, and why we used the compatibility one. It was mainly for jump zeros. Um, to make our, our, our rendering loops as fast as we could without having to worry too much about where in memory they, they end up. And we we managed to get it, we managed to improve the speed reasonably really well, at least to the point where we don't have any visible pulsing per se, like it doesn't run down the length of the leg drawing and moving and that kind of thing, it, it just sort of looks like we would have hoped it to, like a, a solid leg moving around. Um, there is there is a small caveat, and that is that the limbs move much faster at the top of the screen than they do at the bottom of the screen, just because of all the the, the processing involved in drawing and undrawing them. But it does seem to work quite pleasingly well on the on the hardware, which isn't, I suppose, a big surprise since we were able to test it quite a few times. We had quite a lot of grand plans for this game that uh, we mostly ran out of time and memory. Like, I was supposed to be involved a lot more and unfortunately wasn't able to participate. But I'm so impressed with everything Takiso did on this. I hope I'm getting his name right. Uh, like, the, 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 the long stretching arms crack me up every time. There was this really cool sunglasses animation that kind of got lost, unfortunately. Just for memory's sake. But, uh... There's a lot about it that I'm, I'm really very fond of, and I'm, it was really nice working with someone uh, to, to get a game out. I 
these here it runs I think about the same sort of speed that we're seeing in um in Octo. Like the the, the performance is at least equivalent. The the main thing that, that slows things down is moving from hand arms to legs. If uh, what I had, ho had hoped for was just a button that would flip perspective from one to the other so I could just look at the legs. But as things stand, if I push either of the leg buttons, which is what I have to do to do that, it will flip down and then redraw, t redraw, redraw twice uh, because I've both picked up and immediately put back down my leg, which on the hardware is actually quite a slow process. Like there's, there's a significant pulse delay when you, you, you pick up and put down your, your limbs, unfortunately. And it's not so bad, like it's it's perfectly reasonable. Like you, you don't really notice it while you're playing at all. Like it's, uh, as, as IJ was saying, you kind of get a little bit lost in it. Like it's, it's a slow, meticulous process. You're like, oh yeah, I could do that. Or and you just slowly weed your way up the wall. What's really interesting to me uh, is that what apparently no one has noticed is that the places where your arms and feet go, like oh your your legs extend off the screen, and you think okay so this is much below me and this is just above me, but these are actually the sort of the same pegs. Like if I, like I think technically my left foot here. If you look at this pattern, is above my left hand, <laughs> and that—that's not not something anyone seems to have noticed. It's uh, a strange little dichotomy, and I think we would have gotten away with it if I hadn't just pointed it out. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with sort of how this game turned out. There's there's only three levels. You didn't get to see any more than that, but unfortunately, we were able to get only three levels together before running out of memory and time for them. We were we were working on this right right up until the deadline. I suppose technically I did this level? I think I did level two. Yeah. So I did a level in addition to uh, something else. I, mean, I think uh, Takisa had to fix it because we were having... You may remember that there was um, at one point, the screen went completely blank when uh, it was on the stream. And unfortunately, that is a weird mystery bug that we didn't have time to resolve. And like you can see here, like the, the feet and the hands are now on the same holds, technically. You don't really notice it. When you're playing, it just seems to get swept under the rug. Man, I cannot get on this hold. There we go. Like if I change up to the hands, like they're on exactly the same holds. But it, it, it doesn't seem to matter, which is really interesting. There was also a bug for a while where you could climb your own hands. But I believe the... Uh, we considered making it a feature, but then decided no, no. <laughs> By we, I, I of course mean to key so. Uh, a, a lot of this project was done with macros that I have uh, next to no understanding of. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very interesting new feature of which I am not, I have to say, a particular fan because <laughs> it makes everything very hard to optimize. I find because you have all of this code that isn't really there. So how can you? really see what does and doesn't need unrolling or, or where you're losing your speed, that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm, 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 as I say, I'm really happy with this and how it turned out. Oh, I guess I should try and get to the top. Apparently I've won. Hooray, I won the game. There we go. And I guess that's uh, that's it. Good job.
Okay, the next game I'm going to be taking a look at is 2048. I, uh, I had to call this T-O-F-E because uh, it turns out you can't have ni numbers at the beginning of your uh, variable names for your uh, binaries that you have on here. Well, I suppose these are just variables, these are just strings. But uh, I took out the XO chip operations as instructed in the, the comments for this ROM. And I can't remember if it is expecting to, if it's expecting to work on the VIP, it probably needs compatibility. So let's go with the uh, compatibility ROM. And I'm I'm quite impressed with this game. This game is uh, a really nice uh, little thing. It does have functioning sound effects, which I'm quite happy with, uh, because obviously it has the EXO chip operations on uh, Octo for the audio, but we have buzzer effects that work on the HP48 and presumably the VIP as well. Let's see if I can remember which button starts. What I really like is that there's some character in the audio, like like you know when you've combined two together because you get that little high-pitched clip that you don't get if you're just moving pieces around. And I, I must confess to being rather bad at 2048. I think it would be worthwhile to spend some time working out what kind of noises you can actually get out of the HP 48's buzzer using Chip 8's uh, buzzer instruction. Because you can clearly get a variety of effects out of it that might enable some super chip games to have uh, a primitive audio system of some kind that we not quite what we have in Exochip because that has a very useful audio buffer that allows you to do music as an accompaniment to a game. But you could just have a buzzer. You could probably make some kind of very primitive music or percussion for an event. Like you could have a little uh, jingle or something, or like you got the high score or, or what have you. Oh, wow, look at that. Like it even has a different noise for when you can't do it. It's really nice. I'm very impressed by this. And it runs real nice too. Like I'm, I've got to say, I'm very impressed with this game. Not that I'm any good at it. Yeah, that's uh, 2048. The next game that we'll look at is Maze. That would be the, uh, the, 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 I can't quite remember the proper name for it because my uh, laptop display is turned off. Okay, so it was uh, conductive, this is kind of the conductive block, I think. So uh, we've done 2048, now we're going to do first depth search of Maze. And again, I'm going to use, um, Let's have a look real quick. I'm almost definitely going to be using the super chip compatibility, invariably because uh, people have made their super chip games without the quirk boxes checked, and so I don't know if I'm supposed to be using it or not. But I'm sure it will be fine. And uh, this one takes a while to get going, so three, two, one, go. What would be kind of handy is a buzzer signal at the end to tell us, oh, it's finished. Okay, that's the maze complete. And this is probably the first time we're going to see one of the the main problems that we're going to be seeing uh, with games in this jam. And that is that uh, a lot of the flickering effects, 
that we like to use to indicate cursors are almost completely invisible on the superchip or the, the HP calculator display. I have no idea where my cursor currently is at all. Like none at all. And that's, uh, it wouldn't be any different if I'm, because I, I, I play with the, the camera that I'm using to record as my display. So it's actually quite a bit bigger than the actual thing. Um, but even then, I am struggling to sit. So I haven't tried to fix this game. Um, I have fixed one other, and I actually talked with one of the developers for one of the other games and tried it on hardware. And it's like, you know, I can't actually see the player character at all. Like, it's, it's just impossible. Can Is there something we could do to fix it? So uh, it's actually sort of a real concern uh, because if this game is currently sort of unplayable and the fix to it would be to uh, either use a delay register to lower the frame rate which is a bit inconvenient because it lowers your ability to check user input but the, the alternative would be to only um, update the player sprite every say four frames or eight frames or something just so it's much more uh, of a lower frequency update, so it's, it gives it time for the LCD display to uh, sufficiently turn off. Because as things are, it just doesn't turn off enough to be really that visible. Since um, since uh, John managed to get through this whole game on stream, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Super cool, got to give it that. But um, unfortunately, on uh, Superchip, doesn't work so well. The, the, the sort of the same story with the next game from uh, this wonderful submission uh, monster. I guess it's Akuz, Z, Akuz 1, Team Conductive, is a Minesweeper. And you can, you can see the cursor here. if you use the reset button. Seems to work. It's a different board as well, which is cool. There we go. Oh, it's an interesting way the, the, the sprites for active and inactive are missing either the top left or the bottom right. a little bit hard to tell what you have and haven't done though. That's succeeded, I think, anyway. I think that seems to work quite happily with uh, HP 4A. That's a, a game people could reasonably be expecting to play. It would be nice if there was a, a victory condition, obviously, but uh, 
of, you know, an afterthought that isn't particularly important, ultimately. Okay, the next game I'm going to look at is uh, Space Racer. And uh, again, I'm going to be using uh, compatibility. One of the few games that actually have the instructions in the game. Like a, a lot of the time we, we just see games and they start up or we read the, the text associated with them. Uh, this guy consistently puts uh, the instructions in the game, which is, is kind of helpful. But uh, much like um, much like Maze, there's a, a bit of a problem in that it's actually very difficult to see the player ships because there's such a long time between the removal of them, the processing of the playfield, and then the re-edition that they're, they're on for such a short amount of time. And it looks fine in Octo, but on, on Superchip, unfortunately the pixels are only on for a very short amount of time, so it's actually very difficult to play. I'm actually, usually I can't even see the, uh, the player ships, so I'm actually able to just about play it at the moment. It also doesn't perform particularly quickly. Again, this could just be because it's uh, a low-res game. Um, I think this game is actually targeted at the, the VIP rather than the HP48, so you might actually get not so bad performance of it on the VIP. It's hard to know because I, I believe he was depending on... Okay, and we are back. And uh, my iPad ran out of memory for recording the video, so I've had to uh, offload that and put it on my, my uh, computer. And... Um, this adequately demonstrates the other problem with this game, that it's, uh, simply it's it runs so slowly that there's just too much time. Like you wouldn't, like this, you wouldn't play a quick round of this game. It would you be here all day, uh, because we're only about maybe two thirds of the way through the allotted time. So unfortunately, you're unable to see your own ships, and uh, it. it just runs too slowly unfortunately because I think it does depend on uh, the idea of there being a hardware scroll on the VIP uh, that may be available in some capacity that I'm not particularly familiar with. It would be interesting to hear more about that. Um, but as things stand uh, I was able to tweak this game a little bit by changing how the player ships are drawn towards the end of the loop to where that actually moved rather than before all of the calculations are done for scrolling the display. Obviously if you were scrolling that might cause you some trouble with hardware scrolling, but uh, I made some small changes just to reposition things. And I also reduced the amount of time it takes for the uh, rounds to end. you see with, with that change the ships are much more consistently visible so it's uh, it's reasonably possible to make decisions about how you want to move with the ships much more visible and it's uh, that's, that's sort of an implementation issue that you can't really resolve without the hardware because obviously it works fine in Octo Oh yeah, tired. And I also uh, reduced the amount of time it takes to win a round by a, a multiple of two. I reduced it, or was it actually a little bit more than that? I made it the game much shorter. And again, that's the sort of thing where it probably is about the same length. It's just the scrolling takes so much longer. And you can sort of see that maybe, you know, two people in a classroom would be running this and one would have one half the calculator, one would be holding the other half and they would actually be able to play it. So. Uh, it seems like it is a game that would work. Uh, it's uh, a very interesting um, idea to play a game. So it's currently not something that we're really able to demonstrate as part of the Octojam stream. 
So uh, I'll have to see how we get on with that. Okay, the next game that I'm going to demonstrate is Subterranea. Uh, this is your name here's submission, and it presents a little bit of a unique uh, problem for me, in that it is our portrait game. Now, he very helpfully defines at the top of his ROM key binds, so that you can just change the uh, identifier that you want. So I've been able to change the controls around so that it feels right. If I rotate myself, I can hold the calculator and play it with the one hand on the right side as a, as a D-pad, and that seems to work. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to present it as a video, but it should probably work okay. Again, this has got to be working with uh, the Superchip compatibility, uh, simply because it wasn't designed with quirks in mind. Uh, what's interesting is if you've, if you've played it via Octo, uh, it takes quite a while to boot up, but uh, on Superchip, it just kind of is going to go right into it. You do need to push a key, is the only thing. Uh, that might catch people out. Now I actually uh, worked with your name here a little bit just to make sure that the game was okay. And it was this game that I found that I just could not see the player ship at any point. And uh, while it was, that was because it was undrawn, all the physics calculations were done. So it, it knew where the ship was to undraw it undrew it and then um, sorry it knew where the ship was undrew it performed all the physics calculations it needed to do to uh, adequately move the ship and then drew it in its new location but those physics calculations took sufficiently long that the ship didn't end up actually being rendered quite long enough so uh, we we worked out a new method where the positions would be stored in memory, and so that the ship would be undrawn at the end of after all the physics, physics calculations had been performed. From a uh, saved memory, and then the new location will be drawn from the result of the calculations. And this is actually a slower process that takes longer to do than the uh, the original solution. But because it re re results in a much longer period of on time, it uh, renders the game significantly more playable. And that was done before the end of the jam. So there's, I don't have the I don't have an example to compare with now that I think about it, but you can you can clearly see that this ship is easy to pick out. It's eminently playable. Like I could imagine people whiling away whole like school lunch times playing this. Like uh, I would say, I would agree with people's assessment that it may well be. Uh, the most fun game in the jam. Some of the effects, like, I didn't know that the ship exploded until I saw it on the stream, because uh, you, you don't really get, because it's so fast again, the, the pixels don't quite cycle fast enough for it to be visible. So sometimes uh, little display animations do need a little bit more of a leeway given to them on the HP's uh, display. The display on the GX is uh, still a, a blue LCD. Some of the the G pluses that are available, which was so the GX has an expansion card slot. The G plus uh, does not, but they both have one to eight K of RAM. And the uh, some of the G pluses and some of the GXs, the very later editions of them, have a black liquid crystal display that has a, a better contrast. And uh, we weren't able to get one of those, but we were able to get a uh, a GX with the expanded RAM and the higher speed, which has proved very helpful this year. Um, I don't know if it would perform differently. I haven't really noticed any big differences between the S and the 
the the GX in terms of the actual visibility of the the pixels themselves, but it does have a very different. Um, so there's, there's two types of LCD uh, polarization system. The 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 calculator is not backlit. Uh, generally, I, I have a whole setup where I'm shining light down onto it because it uses a reflective system for the uh, the, the LCD basically. And so it depends on external light sources in order to function. And that makes it a real pig to record. You can kind of see the sort of vague outlines of where a light might be on the camera, on the video feed even. And uh, I experimented with what it might take to backlight it, but it would uh, be very, very awkward. It would hold, need a whole new uh, series of, of polarizers. Sometimes you can kind of uh, cheat but you would need a very bright light to get through the, the polarizers that are currently there. The polarizers on the GX, though, are far more... Uh, I guess the best way to describe them would be... Um, it's much less like a mirror. It, it does a lot more refraction from different directions, so it gives you uh, a better... It reflects more different points towards you, so it doesn't provide like a mirror reflection, unlike the S screens polarizer. And that's quite useful for our purposes, because it should, to some extent, hide the, the recording. But I don't think it... Uh, I still haven't found really the perfect solution. You may notice that this is a very kind of noisy video of a lot of digital noise. Oh, I guess I exploded. Oh, so close. Uh, one interesting thing about this ROM is that it includes a, a reset level button. And the the super chip program that we're we're interpreting this with also includes a sort of a reset button. There we go. I'm not really sure how the score is calculated, but uh, if basically if you push the enter button at any point, you can resume from where you left off. And this game remembers what level you're on presumably with memory pointers. So even though it has a button that allows you to restart the level, you could have actually, on the on super chip, you could actually use the enter button. You wouldn't need to give up one of your inputs for that purpose. So yeah, that's uh, a very, very good, very eminently playable game like that. Performs speed-wise very nicely on the HP 48G. I don't know if you know what it's like on the S. I should probably give it a go for comparison's sake. But... Uh, it's probably a bit unfair since it was designed with the S in mind. The G in mind, even, I should say. The last game I'm going to be demonstrating until I double check. Uh... So either the next game or the last game I'm going to do is going to be uh, DVN8. DVN8. Don't really... Didn't really take the time to work out what it's supposed to be, actually, now that I think about it. Feel kind of bad about that. Let's have a look, see if I can work it out. Well, and obviously we've got the pages to go with it, so let's have a go. You approach the sprawling abode with your gold in mind. The doors look well-worn, chips of colours flake down the edges. The exterior is done in colours that remind you of a gingerbread house. The yard is tiny and neatly trimmed. Strange lights are moving about in the windows. You hear the trees behind you blowing. Well. I, I think this is a, a really interesting idea for a game. Uh, the idea of merging the... The fact that you could not possibly put all of this text or this presentation into a game 
on the actual platform itself. So you write a companion book. Like, that's completely reasonable. That is something that definitely was done. And I think it's used here to good effect. I really like the website where it's integrated into the corner. Uh, I'm kind of sad that there wasn't like a PDF version that could be actually printed out. It did depend on the, the website. Uh, obviously, that's, that is going a bit far. But uh, I could have printed it out. I could have had it with me. I could have had it go through all of this just to see what it was like. But as far as I'm aware, this should work just fine. Like, uh, you can see the little, the ditter in the, 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 the corner of the screen that controls your, that shows your position is, uh, is visible. It, it doesn't misbehave itself or anything. Oh, what's, what's kind of interesting about this is the sort of design that would work on the, the Cosmac, the VIP, uh, where you, you're making a decision, the game updates in some way. Like, all of this could work on a Cosmac. Because even if it takes an ice age to display the, the whole full, uh, full sprite, uh, the full bitmap image, it doesn't matter, because you're depending on the book, in a way. Like, oh, you just need to move around, move backwards into places and get a key. That's interesting. Is there like a cheat button that just increases your page number? If you push, I guess, free, I guess it just seems to increase the page number. Oh, that's a shame. I, I lost track of which where I was supposed to be and accidentally did that. Well, there you go. That's, uh, that's that for you. Seems to work just fine. I can reset it, completely break it, that'll be interesting. Oh wow, I've, I've really made that unhappy. I wonder if we can find a new room that isn't supposed to exist. Oh, there we go. And that was uh, Divinate. So, for completeness' sake, I've also put Wonky Pong on here. And uh, unfortunately, it has another tail told of the LCD refresh. The ball is basically un unseeable, uh, rendering the game effectively unplayable. Where's the ball? Like, you just can't really play it. And again, it has functioning buzzer noises, I guess, which is interesting. So it's, uh, we've seen at least two games this year that used ExoChip simply for some audio when they didn't need to if they were running on real hardware. Well, they didn't need to if they were running on real, real hardware because buzzer effectively works. So it seems like perhaps we should model the way that the buzzer actually responds and uh, maybe give some kind of option in Octo to allow people to use buzzer for audio because people are doing it, people are doing it. So, uh, just one final little aside here, there is one additional advantage to having real hardware. And that is, it's very much more easy to get a second person involved. Uh, since Wonky Pong doesn't work so well, I'm going to go back to my modified version of Space Racer. Alright, so, uh, this is Space Racer. It's a two-player game. Uh, it beeps a little bit. 
So uh, you can push a button to skip the instructions, but obviously we're not going to do that. Um, the objective is to get the game to... The, the object of the game is to move the ship through the stuff without hitting anything. Mm -hmm. You get one point per transit. And uh, there'll be two little ships at the bottom. And there's two little timers as well. I don't know what that symbol is between left and right. Um, that's a good question. I guess it means well, and. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and then whoever has the high score wins. So the, the, the buttons are um, going to be, uh, I think, A and F. No, so R and F. So you're going to be, it's these X and minus button here. It's mm -hmm. going to be your up and down button. And sometimes you're going to want to go backwards if there's a star coming in that you need to avoid. Right? So this little thing down here, this ship, this, that's you, and this one's me. And you should be able to move. You have to kind of hold it down. It's a bit slow, and you want to avoid the... Um, you want to avoid the little stars, and these, these are stars, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a little bit unfair, I think, this game, uh, because the of the direction of the star field. Like, I'm always going to get ahead of you. Yeah, that's true. Unless I make a mistake. Or you, uh, you facilitate a, a very brave gambit. Is it, do I have to get off the screen? Or yeah, you have to, you, you, you'll wrap all the way around to the bottom side, so you just hold forward and you should get around and you get a little point, there you go. And there's a, um, there's a sort of a, like you can kind of use the, the shape of your ship to your advantage, because you've got a little nose and you can kind of get around the star if you're brave enough, because it's running so slowly that you're sort of like, oh yeah, I can have a go at that, oh god, you're catching me up. You can get through there, you can get through that gap. I'm, I'm not chancing. <laughs> you are. You're just trying to bait me to destruction. No, 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 no. It's, uh, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. Come on, come on. Ah, I, just, I didn't make it. By, uh, this game used to be uh, take a lot longer. Like, I, um, I had to uh, change the... Oh no, it was getting away from me. I had to change the length of time that the, the game ran. Because obviously you can see this is already like, you know, three minutes or something. It's like, oh, how long could you could reasonably be expected to play this? It's hard with the delay. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's an interesting little game because um, there's not Sometimes too many... the stars are flashing, does that mean anything? No, I think that's just, um... you know, I'm not sure what it means. <coughs> I don't think it means anything. Like, it's always the same ones that are flash, and I don't really know why. Because none of the rest look like they do. Let's see if we can... No, oh, I think it's going to be a tie. <sighs> Had to go for it. Right? Oh, there we go. What happened? Oh, the timer ran out. I, I didn't realise there was a timer. Yeah, well, there you go. We, we tied. Well done. We shook hands with you. <clears throat> it was fun. Yeah, what's the bad, eh?